I'm more well connected. Oh, uh, I'm Workout. more. I'm probably more connected with uh, um, the state sometimes than with Camden because I know all my friends are all all in Augusta from the governor, and I, I've I've known like four four governors personally over the years, and they they still remember me a little bit in Augusta, <laughs> so that's why I think I could be a help. Uh, uh, if anything, to make getting the right people, getting the connection with the right people that we need, and and uh, getting them um, moved along quicker, perhaps getting things done. To... Yeah, Gary, I'm making a mental note of that because there's actually some legislative stuff that um, we'd like to try to do in Augusta. Okay. Yeah, um, no, that's good. And I, um, a lot of the people that I serve with uh, are now uh, either commissioners or deputy commissioners in these departments. Oh, and, awesome. and, and politics is kind of a weird thing. You, you build a once a politician, always a politician. You kind of never leave that spot, kind of, which which I I enjoy and um, I, I I like keeping connected. What what's going on in the in the state? We had Dave Merriman. Dave was great. I mean, for he, he he worked with me a lot on different issues of store issues and things that try to make things better. And uh, it's nice to have uh, legislators involved. Which you didn't added. serve coincidentally with Dave, did you? No, I didn't. No, nope. yeah, no, nope. you didn't nope. overlap. I thought he, you were, but you pre you pre served him. Yeah, I've been out uh, forty three years now. I, I've been yeah. out a long time. Um, I was actually the I was the, the uh, youngest legislator ever elected. Way way. Yeah, back. I was thinking you would have been pretty darn young. Yeah, I was twenty in the primary, and then twenty one when I was sworn in. So I, I got an early dose of uh, politics and government and. At a, at a young age and uh, I still have always been involved but not not me personally being involved and, but now I think it, my life I'm trying to winding down things a bit and I focus in um, just just my love of Camden and this whole area it's just uh, I just love it so much that there's no place to go after Camden I think I, I can't think of another place I'd want to go and that's you know that's why I love it and Anything we can do to make it better, that um, I'm all in on that for sure. Hang on, I'm multitasking here. Okay, no. Um, Tom, that's is... so great. I was so happy when I saw we were we were at the in the select board meeting, and you're it's my least favorite meeting of the year because <laughs> usually because you had more applicants than sometimes committee spots for yeah. for a lot of them, and and it's like you're just all at once all the town committees you have to like appoint people and it's just it's like a can feel like a, a weird kind of awkward popularity contest but most of the time it's kind of the same people and then i was going through and i was like oh, da, 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 Patrick's committee. And i was like gary fowley whoa i didn't <laughs> that's does he really want to do this that's great um yeah. and then we had uh, this whole big round of round trying to figure out if we had enough spots and uh. um and and I was like, oh my gosh, we like we don't need to overemphasize the whatever the bylaws say about the number of members and voting members and non-voting members, and it's really it really never comes down to that anyway. Voting on the pathways committee, um, so it was uh, it was like, who do we call an alternate or not an alternate? And and at first we thought we were going to have to kick somebody off in order to get you on. And I was like, and it was, it's <laughs> Allison that. That connects the dots because out of the blue, Janice says, what are your bylaws in terms of how many members? I was like, why is she asking me this? So yeah. I, sent, I sent her the formation documents and I was just trying to figure out why Janice asked me that question. It was a few Oh, weeks she ago. didn't tell you why she asked? No, um, she yeah, said- we were- yeah, yeah, she just said- we, it. we had to create a new category. We were creating a new category of like guest for different- committees and it was like just we just need to tell everybody that they can go to the committee if yeah, they if they yeah. want and we'll work that out later but it was perfect because it turned out that there were more alternate positions than we actually thought there were um and so yeah three alternates so i guess gary's technically an alternate but i still think we should really de-emphasize that whole thing because anybody that was watching our meeting is, is really kind of left with the idea that you have to be this like appointed member when we really want to encourage, you know, yeah. participation from, from anybody. But I'm glad we didn't have to put you in a special category 
Gary, yeah, no. you're, a, well, yeah, you're an alternate, so whatever that means. <laughs> no, no, that is fine. I'm just happy to be on it. And and I, uh, we, I'm probably being a business body three years. I know so many people in Camden and and people that want to help out for different causes. If we need to even seed money, raising money, people have always. I, there's a lot of, uh, as we all know, there's a lot of people that want to make Camden better. Also, so helping to do whether it's improving some roads or the uh, fixing uh, to the snow bowl and or whatever. You know, there's, uh, there'll be, I think there'll be private money involved too to help with the seed uh, seed money. For that the sounds state. like and, a that sounds like a plug, Gary. All right. Oh yeah, um, you've got like a public <laughs> information center right there. Yeah. All right, let's get rolling here. Um, uh, Tom's on. Um, I texted Andrew. No answer there. Andrew just got done writing, circumnavigating up uh, up in Baxter on his bike. He was oh, doing wow. a multi-day bike camping trip. So he had a good time. But he should be back. I'm surprised. Uh, here we go. Um, well, that doesn't look too good either. Richard, that's another mistake. Well, January minutes, that's not right. So the minutes are, uh, we're not going to vote here in on minutes because this is not a complete, I'm just going to remind you, it's not a complete committee. Uh, we only formally vote on the minutes when we meet jointly with Rockport. Um, so minutes are not an issue. Uh, but Anita has been doing a great job of tracking what we're doing by coming out with the to-do list in terms of the action items. And so we'll morph to that. And even this last meeting, um, at the last meeting, the uh, it was mostly informational when we did the joint meeting. So are you guys getting an echo or just me? Not me. Sounds okay. good from here. All right. Yeah. Oh, I just I'll want I, I unmuted. I just wanted to apologize. I don't think I got to the minutes this past month, so I so I didn't get a copy over to you. Well, that's that would have been an informational meeting, Anita. It was just all uh I took a a, a large number of notes anyway. Unfortunately, um I think you guys saw that there was no record of that meeting with MDOT and <clears throat> um the other folks. So it had a lot of good information in it, but we'll see if we can get something else that summarizes it. That was about uh, what completes, what streets, what are complete streets. Um, all right, before we go too far, um, I think, uh, Gary, we've sort of introduced you, so that'll take care of that. There's also another person that's going to be joining as an alternate. Her name is Lindsay Levine. Lindsay was at the meeting, the joint meeting. Um, and she enjoyed it, and she's going to volunteer to be another alternate. So now we are full. Uh, we'll have three alternates and five members in Camden. Nice. So that's great. A lot of new blood. Um, moving on. Uh, first item is... Uh, the river walk um, and um, the CRMS wastewater wastewater treatment plant uh, sections. Uh, I did not. The next item, I uh, uh, the next action item related to that, which I didn't have a chance to share with you, is that uh, going to um, see if I can revisit with Maria Libby, the superintendent, about possibly doing a, uh, reconsidering doing a site law review for the middle school. Um, in order to extend the river walk across the middle school, we need to have uh, more capacity for disturbed surfaces. Um, right now they have maxed out their disturbed surfaces on their lot. Uh, and the workaround uh, through legislation is to do a site law review, similar to what's happening at the Snow Bowl in order for them to do the Round the Mountain Trail um, extension there. Uh, Allison, um, a long time ago, Dave St. Lorenz said that he might be taking down 
or his intent was to take down the fence at the wastewater treatment plant. Have you heard anything more about that? Yes, I don't think you should phrase it like that because th that makes it seem like it's a decision that could be reversed or dependent on one person, which um, the way we've tried to make sure that it's communicated is um, the actual facts, which was, it was part of the planning board site plan review for the new treatment plant when they did all, all of the um, upgrades there that went to the planning board and the pathways committee um, and several others commented that you know that fence that goes around the entire parcel um, i know you're aware of this jeff but just the, but for anybody who isn't you know that fence ironically it doesn't it goes right to the river's edge but it doesn't um you know there's no fence in between the river and the um and the land but it's you know it's almost five acres that they've got barbed wired off there um and it's it's just incredibly annoying um because a huge part of that parcel doesn't have dangerous equipment on it but it was you know it was just easiest when they did it back in the 70s or whatever i think just to run that fence everywhere and then i guess they must have assumed at the time that nobody would have wanted to get anywhere near the river and so they didn't need to even do that side of it but the planning board agreed that as much of that parcel as possible should be available for public and, and wildlife passage and that there's no reason that the the town needs to have the entire thing portioned off um it looks like not all of that um in, in the during the tenure of the previous um administration or it's it's not clear why that part of the site plan wasn't completely implemented before um but so dave has been working on um <clears throat> they came up with a oh we just had a tour there the other day they came up with a plan for where they actually need to have the fence so they're putting um which is really just around the um equipment so they have a whole approved plan uh, for new fence going up and they my understanding is that they're negotiating that contract right now they're trying to use the usda grant funds to be able to do that but because of all the rules that they have for exactly how you know it has to be american steel and american made and three bids and all this stuff so they're um it's a slightly smaller job than than some of what they're used to so the last i heard which was when we had that tour there um with the that was in the newspaper yeah um they have that plan that fence is going is going to be going up and at that point the um other portions of it that are closer to the river can go can come down um so that will be that'll be good just to have that out of the way because right now you know even if you're ambitious you get to the end of the river walk from the Knowlton street section and even if you're ambitious and are willing to you know just bushwhack a little bit you absolutely cannot get through unless you're the fence even extends out into the water a little bit it's kind of crazy so there hasn't been any resistance to the idea that this is still needs to be something is you know is something that can happen and um and there's a lot more um we were talking to the usda people a little bit too and um they were saying there was some talk about educational aspects of wastewater treatment plants and you know in a perfect world that river walk would kind of extend um you'd have the dangerous parts of the treatment plant cordoned off but then you might even have some educational signage that tells people this is what a wastewater treatment plant is and you know this is what it does and this is where it goes and um you know you've got the school right there too so yeah, the um yeah the so the I think that was a, an accomplishment of the Pathways Committee. Um, a couple times I've said when they said they weren't making much progress or that part had stalled, I said, oof, you know, I don't want to. The Pathways Committee has been asking about this. And if I have to go back to them and tell them <laughs> that, you know, that part of the site plan review um, 
And so, cause there's this, there's this external inspector too. And I was like, oh, these people, you do not want to have to go to the pathways committee and say that we're not doing this. So, so, so just remember, Jeff, you're, you're, you're not asking, you're, you're telling. And, uh, no, I was asking about what the status yeah. was. Um, oh, no, I just want to yeah, make sure that that's, uh, you don't, you don't, I was, uh, I'm blow curious, my cover on that. No, no, I'm curious. You said that it needed to be approved. Um, is that Augusta that needs to approve the plan or who? No, or USDA or um, who is it? It's just the, um, it was the, well, you know, I think it's, it's, sometimes I don't know if I'm getting the full story. I think there, there's two questions. One is whether it can be covered if it's under the, um, the, we have a loan and we have a grant. So it was the, the majority of it is the favorable terms loan. And then there's a couple, a million and a half or something. That's the grant. Um, and so some of that is, had not been expended and being able to use mm. the, ideally we want to use as much of the grant portion as possible. We don't want to use, leave any of those funds unspent, but that all the, in order to use those funds, it has to be related to the project has to be part of the initial project that was approved. And so initially there was some chatter like, oh, well, this is a different after the fact thing. I believe that was coming more internally from wastewater treatment plant employees, maybe some of the like legacy employees. Not everybody wants to open up their job area to like more public visitors. So I think maybe they're like, oh, we weren't going to do that. But then we were able to show them the record from the planning board and the site plan review and all that that says, nope, this is all part of it. So that's what I mean by approved, that it, you know, recognized as part of the project that was approved. So I think we just sit tight. We let them handle that. And at least when we get to the point where we do have funds to and an agreed upon plan to put the river walk in, we won't be running up against the barrier of our own property. Um, yeah. So I, the reason I was asking the question, Allison, is that ages ago, years ago, um, I don't even know, four or five years ago, when we first were considering this uh, section, I contacted um, sort of the overarching agency that the wastewater treatment plan works under in Augusta. And they said they had no issues about opening it up. And I shared that with the town. And I thought when you went up and said approval, I was like, eh. They're, they'd already said it, that right. it wasn't an issue. Yeah. So the that was great. The resistance, as it often is, was internal. I and mean, yeah. this is me being personal, that it's amazing how many barriers can be removed when you have people that are working for the town that are kind of embrace the idea that, yeah, it would be great if the public could use this more yeah. when you want to come up with ideas like, Oh, well, this would create more complications. Um, you know, then you can, you know, they like to say, Oh, it might be too much of a liability, but we've overcome that. I think everybody seems on board and um, it, I think, I think everything's good with that. It would be good to, they're, they're open to giving tours and stuff too. So, it might be a fun um, field trip before too long to to say, hey, the Pathways Committee or whoever else would like to go for a walk over there um, and, you know, see what they've done. Because they've, they've done a lot and it'll be easy to see kind of what, um, you know, what needs to be cordoned off. And um, it's... Uh, it was it was really fun actually doing the tour. I think more people. Yeah, yeah, I missed it. it. I I saw it post. Um, I I'm sad about that. It would have yeah, been it good. wasn't. It was kind of just that they had a whole bus of people there, so it wasn't wasn't anybody can. Re well, I guess what I'm saying though is it's okay to request to to come over and take a look too. If we especially if we organize a, a few people to do it, um, mm. so they don't have to give individual tours, but they're very. Oh, I said, you know, when I was a kid, I went, to, I did tours over there. Why isn't that really happening much anymore? And they said kind of like people just stopped asking. Um, Sheldon Maine, who's worked there for a long time, said that they would, you know, they'd be happy to give tours. Um, but. Hmm. 
but since you know the barbed wire and all of that it doesn't really give the most uh like it's not the best first not the feeling most, the so, best right you, you don't get the impression that they want people just to stop by and look around but but apparently exactly. they do all right moving on um anything else on that any other questions related to that now, I know I put Elm Street on here for a reason, but I can't, for the life of me, remember why. Um, Maybe you were, you were going to give us an update as to what's going on with it. No, because there's nothing, nothing, there's, I, th there's no status change at this point. Um, and I can't remember. I know Andrew, uh, on the next line, related, uh, talking about the i put i call it stop and go in the agenda but um really andrew had had drafted up some sketches that all of us have seen uh about the right hand turn lane and i was want, wanted him to update us on whether he uh shared that with public works yet or not or um but i i don't know I don't know. I was looking for that update. Allison, did you have something? Jeff? Yeah, Richard? Um, you were, you at some point mentioned looking at the DOT stuff about where the Route 1 Elm Street right away really is. Yeah, and I did. And the answer is I was wrong. I, I, I They did not share it in the document that I was thinking of. Okay. It wasn't. It wasn't there. Did you find something? I did some looking and found nothing. I found nothing, and I looked okay. beyond. I, I don't know where the right of way is in that whole intersection at all. Gary, do you have any, uh, wh where the right of way is? Uh, I don't have anything in detail, but the, um, it's been there. It's probably been there for some while because actually, a lot of people don't know. Uh, Union Street is actually Route One. That on yeah. the DOT. And right. they call it just because that's why they, I think at the store, they always come in and they say, oh, that's the only uh, stop sign on Route 1. And I go, no, there's not. I said, there isn't. There's no stop sign on Route <laughs> <I> 1. <know. laughs> because this <laughs> Route 1, this route one uh, goes through Rockport Village. And that's why, like, the, um, <laughs> that's why the Catholic Church is, like, there. That's why Rankins, and it was more commercial. That many years ago, that was... That was Route One through Rockport Village up through Union Street, and then they hit the Congregational Church. There, it's pretty much a new development going up from the store up to uh, um, Hannaford. That was all like houses and stuff, and they then they changed it there. So those right of ways have probably been, I mean, they're hundreds, hundred or more years old, uh, mm. probably if they even have accurate records of that. But it is a um, um, it, it's one of those, uh, it's been, kind of been there forever things. And it's a good bat. It's a good bar bat. If you ever, you can say about the, at the stop sign on route, on, on route one, because there is no stop signs technically on route one. <laughs> Ooh, Gary, I don't know if I would be in to arbitrate the, the, the answer <laughs> to that question. That yeah. could get, <laughs> that could get pretty bad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so I'm sorry, I, I don't have, uh, Anything particular about that? Um, I need, uh, Allison, sorry. So, so this is gonna be one of the great benefits of having Gary on the committee to be able to um, kind of rather than like speculating all the time about, well, I wonder if Gary would be okay with this kind of an idea or that kind of an idea. Um, <laughs> And I'm trying to think of like how we can best, because this is something that comes up so much, you know, how can we get crosswalks here or there? How can we, um, you know, just improve that situation, mostly for pedestrians. I think I hear a lot from the, from the ends. Um, we know that yes. at, at some point Elm street is gonna, you know, we, that sidewalk there, requires major reconstruction. The whole road requires some drainage work. Um, and so figuring out like, you know, what the, what the possibilities are. Um, one of the things that was kicked around is maybe what we really need to do rather than this whole idea where we just 
each individual person comes up with ideas and then we then we shoot them down at a select board meeting um is a more formal study i think they're not the, there's a word for it that they have for with dot where they look at all these different options um and rockport's doing that with some of their stuff um and because we had been kind of trying to think we could maybe jump right to what the solution might be and get funding for that mm -hmm. um but i think they were maybe it was odd or somebody was saying maybe what we really or maybe it was Dakota after the meeting um, saying Dakota's the guy from DOT, Gary. Um, okay. Uh, okay. Saying maybe, is it the village improvement plan or project? I think it's they VPI, for, VPI or VIP. Yeah. He was talking about the one in Rockport is exactly, it's a big study by and a Maybe we need to do that agency. for Camden. Yeah. So that, that people can look at, okay, well, this is what, this would do this is what that would do because it always the conversation always breaks down in kind of non professional terms of speculation well i think the last time sophie was like well there should be a roundabout and dot was like it's really not feasible there and yeah. and uh sophie was like well you just have a closed mind and then in and nobody got to see any drawings or i think it was pretty much case closed that so the roundabout wasn't <laughs> viable there but um, I think that it, it seems like rather than having just like somebody like Andrew or me or drawing something, we're probably going to need more professional help. Um, That's consistent. And I don't with know how much Gary's been involved. involved. Yeah. Right. Like, like, you know, cause we, cause so much of it's so easy, but then you get to those last little parts, the few houses that are up from stop and go the like the red one and the where everything is so narrow that you can't really figure out what the sidewalk would do there mm -hmm. and breaking down what those options would be um is just really hard or do we give up on that entirely and just try to go on the other side of the street mm -hmm. and then you run into the tree and um so just figuring out where there might be momentum to try to make a plowable sidewalk all the way from you know quarry hill to the downtown yeah. um maybe even a little subcommittee of people that could start talking about it more bring gary up to speed on the previous conversations that were had although you might be i think i want gary... to make sure we take advantage of having gary here yeah, no. and we spent, what? Gary, we spent quite a bit of time talking to Gary at the uh, information meeting. Oh, the, you did? Oh, yeah, okay. we spent a long time uh, actually on that specific subject, as I recall, Gary. Sorry, oh, I didn't okay. go ahead, yeah. Gary. Oh, great. Yeah, no, I think that every, for every issue, uh, anything that you deal with, that government has to deal with, or our own business, there's always, there's always a, somewhere there's an area, a compromise area, or something that can work without, I think that the, the main concern of the proposal of taking that turn lane out on that turns up the Union Street, um, that would be, I mean, traffic would just be crazy. If the, if, if the, I always say do a test run, just block it off for for our day and see how what happens to traffic. That's, that's brilliant. A yeah, that's a really good idea. Let's just see. Yeah, you try it for say, try it for a week or something. Yeah, but the but you, you when you go by the store, you we have the transports coming in with twelve thousand gallons of fuel. PG Willie, although there's a lot of big truck at the, a lot of big trucks, they barely navigate what's happening now. And my my concern about if we if we close down that lane, um, it really wouldn't affect my business if the people are there or not. But if we close down that right lane, it would push all those big trucks into more into the the residential areas, which I think may may not be the best for them, but I, but I, any any plan, there's always something can work. You know, definitely get a hundred. Where I agree, the sidewalks um, are horrible. You know, kind of on both sides of the road going yeah. up. And I, I wish about you know it was a way to 
somehow shift that center line, but that's a DOT thing. You need to shift that line, still allow a walkway, a sidewalk, but a, you know, it's traffic could go up on both sides, but it may not be enough on the other side. Right. Because it causes a... Well, I think that kind of stuff is just, even sometimes if we I can, we can get so a few, we know that a few people agree that something's worth asking DOT for, yeah. that's where we can make a little progress. I feel like having, having you part of the conversation. Yeah. I mean, maybe you can, if you see some possibilities, um, if you know, if you and, you know, Dave St. Laurent and a few of us on the committee all were able to, to get to something that, that we could feel like we wanted to ask DOT for, then that would take the, the select board would feel like better about being able to move forward with something, you know, to asking something, knowing that there's at least some support. Um, right. Yeah, I think I, I agree. I think it's, it's kind of a, I watch uh, even today, the people, no matter, they still don't use the crosswalks. A lot of people, no matter, you can have, but a lot of people always, they are crossing the road where they shouldn't be crossing. But the the ironic thing is that it's like the traffic is moving so slow. It's, it's kind of like the Hannafin parking lot because traffic is moving yeah. slow and the, and the cars stop when they see a pedestrian, even though they're not in the crosswalk, they should be in the crosswalk because there is a crosswalk down the road uh, that Dave put in um, closer to the Hearst property down on the school. So yeah, it's a nice it's, it's too far away. That's what it's it is. Far. People don't, they don't, uh, they take the shot, but I don't know. It's, it's, it's uh, people that should use the crosswalk, but they don't. I think yeah. the DOT, the DOT could have better stop signs and signage there too, I think, because a lot of people just still blow right through that. When there's no traffic, they blow right through coming down Route 1, heading north. They kind of blow right through that stop light of, of the flashing light. I think that getting them to put the light more visible so that and, and so people know they have to stop there. Oh yeah, I did see those lights. I did notice those lights you were talking about, Gary, the double blinkers. Yeah, the double it kind of the they, double they blinkers, they alternate. Off. Yeah, and they and they may, they know it's um uh uh driving Some, up to them. Yeah, something's happening. Pay attention. Right. That's basically yeah. what it says. Yeah, but there has Ironically, even when I went to a meeting with the DOT with here too, that ironically there's there's been very few there's been fender members there, a lot of horns blowing, but there's been very few accidents or bodily injury accidents there. Mm. And and uh, but you know, I'm not saying that's it should, we're just lucky in a way because it is kind of a, a mess there, but but there hasn't been a lot of and I think it's because the traffic is so slow mm. going through there and but I think that looking at it, like like uh, Alice has suggested, also getting getting together and just look at the things, and this there may be something a middle ground or something that we that all of us are overlooking when we, when you get different minds looking at an issue. Yeah, something can be done there. Yeah. That, Any suggestions on on uh, how to? Well, part of the part of the suggestion that I began with was. Andrew was Andrew sort of sketched one idea up and it gives you something to sort of comment on. Um, so you go, yeah, well, here's the problem with that or here's not, or but what if we did this or what if we did that? So it's sort of a, a springboard for the conversation. Um, yeah. uh, and we sort of went that way a little bit, Gary, when we were, I don't know why, but we were looking at a, a, a picture of this Um when we were at the uh, at the middle school talking about the master plan, um, yeah. I think we were talking about that quite a bit. Um, yeah, yeah. I think, but I think. Yeah. We, what about a fully signalized intersection? Sorry. Oh, oh like a like a stop. Yeah, like an actual you know stoplights, like they like like a full you know, like a Hannaford situation. Yeah, I I think. Um... I think it's it's good at Hannah because they're pulling out. This is probably the um, one of the sloppiest intersections there is, but it works. You're getting you're getting maximum cars through there, but with a stoplight, sometimes cars could be going, but they're a light that has a red light that's stopping them. And mm. as you know, Allison, when our house gets back back together again, we live on the other side of Camden. The the southbound traffic on Route One 
the only thing that holds it up is is the uh, uh, pedestrian traffic or someone parallel parking on Main Street mm -hmm. coming, coming north to south. But that's been the bigger delays. I've had uh, I've had a, like a forty minute delay already this year, just going checking on my home. Uh, it was backed up to like late construction and yeah. Any any it's weird. any mess with that that southbound traffic, it, you know, would be it would just cause more delays on that end but potentially. But the DOT would know more about that. I need a, I, I I do see your hand. You don't have to keep it up all the time. Oh, is that me? No, Anita's got her hand up. Oh, okay. But I but I think that. Um, can I just ask Gary a question, yeah. please? Gary. Yes. Yeah. Uh, when you said people don't use the crosswalk, which crosswalk are you talking about? Uh, I'm talking most of them in Camden. <laughs> I mean, no, you you. I I took a note that you you said people are crossing and then. Well, they're crossing without the crosswalk. The crosswalk. What yeah, crosswalk are you talking about? Uh, the cross. There's a crosswalk. On, on the corner of the Elm Street School, that that people do ninety percent, ninety five percent of it, when they're walking up, to, they cross there. There's a crosswalk in front okay. of the. Uh, there's uh, Elm Street School has two corners, and there's a crosswalk at both. There's Free Street and there's Union Street. Yes. There's so w which one are you talking about? Well, I'm talking about the crossing right across. They're just crossing right across the road before that on Union Street. Let project. me just try. Let me. Uh, he's talking about Dave Saint Laurent painted a, a crosswalk about fifty feet up Union Street. Okay, that's um, all I want to know. Thanks. Yeah, yeah, that's where it's located. Yeah, but but people generally people um, they 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 even if there's crosswalks and stuff, some not everyone obeys them. You know, there's a few that don't. I mean, yeah. uh, but that's that's their own peril if they if there's a crosswalk and they don't don't want to use it you know so but most of my customers always you see them walking along that road they'll they'll use the crosswalk they'll come down in front of the congregational church and they'll cross and they'll walk the, the walkway then cross at the the other side of elm street school on union street they do they do use it when it's there uh, the people but the other All side right. of the road, getting, getting at least getting one good sidewalk that's that um, is accessible to everyone would be nice. I don't know. Yeah, and and uh, to that point, <clears throat> just sorry to interrupt, Gary. No, I no. just I did recall Anita that I think you volunteered to sort of play around a little bit with uh, a workaround at the at the steps at the tree. Um, oh yeah, the the and, tree. And, uh, yeah, did you did you come up with anything? I, I did actually. I think there's enough. Um, it would involve building a a, a wall. Don't say don't say a lift. No. <laughs> no, it would involve it would, uh, it would involve building a law a, a wall there that, that would protect the tree enough, and then have it pedestrians they could go up on the normal slope without going up the stairs. Up the that if you look at the you know, um, it can be done. I look if I'm looking at it, it just could be that way the tree wouldn't be disturbed. And then the, the, the sidewalk would be you know close to the tree. And most of that sidewalk that there's now would be taken out or it could be kept if they wanted to keep it as a um as an area to um an alternate have, or something. Yeah, an alternate walk. Yeah. yeah. Anita, I think Anita was was gonna sketch something up that uh that offered sort of a long, gentle ramp uh, um, for just to to get an idea. Was that am I mis mis misspeaking um, there, Anita? I think that Gary and I are probably talking about the same thing. I think Gary is talking about a sidewalk that's right starts at the curb and is the width of a sidewalk going in towards the tree, and then there's a wall there that re a retaining wall. Um, my additional suggestion to um, to Dave St. Laurent. Um, I, I'm not convinced that that would not harm the tree to cut down into that soil, even though it's further from the tree than the existing sidewalk. Um, but my suggestion would be to do it in two, uh, two years. Do one year where you're cutting, you're literally cutting through 
uh, the soil down to where it needs to be cut, even if nothing is built, just to cut the roots, but only do half the length and then go uh, the second half of the length cutting the roots. So you do it over two years to give the tree a little more opportunity to recuperate. Yeah. Does that make sense? Uh, I think it does. Yeah, I think it that is a, a way of getting around it. And, and the tree experts would know too. So having a tree person to see, that is probably, it's probably one of the more beautiful trees in Camden. I mean, it's, a, it's an oak tree that's it's generally hardy and it's not going to be the elm uh, the elm issues and other issues they have with trees. The oaks seem to be thrive in this climate for now. So it's, um, but I think that designing that so that there could be a walkway along this, not the side without digging too much into the tree, I think it would be. And the, the Jared and Cohen, um, I think they're selling the property there. And so that, mm. that so I'm not sure um, what hasn't sold yet. So that that's, I don't know if that's an issue, but it's, um, I know I, oh. I, um, I often shovel that walkway there too. I just, it, it's just that for the, like the towns can't get up there, but yeah, you know, just to keep it safe for the uh, people that walk, um, that do walk on that side there. But, um, but I think it, again, it's, it's, when you get some of the expert, the tree experts, the other people that what you can do, and see where the roots are growing. You know, they, um, and maybe maybe they're not growing into the road at all. <laughs> that would yeah. be nice. <laughs> well, I, I suspect given what I've read about um, how far roots go beyond the trunk of the tree, I definitely think that you'd be disturbing roots by uh, cutting in even if you're creating a wall. Um, yeah. And I also suspect, I sus this is my suspicion, that a tree expert would say, no, you can't do that, you'll kill the tree. Yeah. yeah. And it, it would be a, a black and white question to them. Mm -hmm. And to me, I think that we can find a compromise in the way that I suggest. Yeah. Well, they, I'm going to yeah. back us up a little bit instead of trying to problem solve this um, at this particular time, because we're getting in more and more details. Um, I, I kick this off by saying, is there a way for us to try to move this process forward? I don't know if we have one or not. Um, that was what we were trying to do. And I don't know if it's this committee that um, encourages the the town to move forward. I don't, I don't, I don't, the, our, the natural tendency when we talk about this subject, any committee, any members of our community, including the select board, is to digress into problem solving. And we have to try to back out of that and I think, <laughs> uh, and try to get some some external expertise involved in it. Uh, and it may, I, I suspect uh, if I were gonna draw a picture, I would say that when um, the select board and uh, the town agree on working on the Elm Street puzzle of, uh, of redoing the sidewalks, that there will be public information meetings proposing solutions on both sides of the street to this. And that's when we engage in those uh, in those discussions. So the main thing right now is, is just to continue to keep the town considering uh, Elm Street uh, and don't don't yeah that would be my suggestion no i i agree it's uh look at it like i said in the beginning there's different options that someone there's other options that maybe we oh, all of us overlooking you know yeah we don't know but make it to make it work and uh, uh but it is a uh, the sidewalks on both sides of the street definitely have to be yeah improved or or, or the other thing is just making one on what some places you may have to bear out and use have a good sidewalk in that one area, but both sides aren't perfect. So yeah. a handicap accessible, at least a yeah. handicap get down. Okay. They have to cross cross the road, you know, in, with a flashing lights or something. But, Allison, did you have something to add? Yeah, just really quickly, I I think that maybe 
in encouraging um, this to be part of a planning grant or if there's if there's one thing we can be sure of it's that design options are going to take external expertise we we've done all we can with the speculating about the tree or that tree or we we need professional expertise and that's going to mean hiring somebody and and dot does have a a process that they recommend where i think the town pays 20 percent and they pay maybe 80 percent and um so that so that we could move forward with with something that's properly funded to to analyze all the options and really you know with the tree and whatever else um yeah because otherwise it's just going to be us all coming up with ideas about tree roots and yeah you know how long how much longer is that tree going to live on its own all the yeah, yeah you know maybe there maybe there's no real way to no, no real danger to the tree and we just maybe. you know we're all just imagining just based on one thing that nancy cuddle johnson said 20 years ago i don't know speculation um, all right let's move then um if there's no objection to it anita you'd like to continue go ahead you're muted yeah um, we keep getting to this very point. How do we get the select board to be decisive about the process? That is where we are. And that's where we've been for half a year. The select yeah. board needs to be decisive about the process we will undergo to take the next steps to move forward. I thought Allison's suggestion was spot on, and um, it's a there are these things called BPI grants. Um, I can't remember what it stands for, but uh, it's the same village process. Village planning planning something. initiative, maybe village planning. It's the same process that Rockport just went through with an outside consultant. It's not unlike um, what we went through for the waterfront planning um, process and uh, on the river walk. Uh, uh, planning process. Okay, so this was like Allison, 10, 15 years ago. So the the is process Allison taking that on is she going to bring that to select board or do uh, we? I bring don't. Select board. I don't think it's quite. It's an that's a, a momentum inertia thing where uh, you have to discuss it. It's 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 also a staffing issue for the town because it's a huge amount of effort for town staff. Um, so I think we should check in with. So Dakota um, Hewlett said that he had met with um, with Dave St. Laurent prior to our meeting. Um, I can certainly check in with Audra about whether there's, um, you know, where things are going with that, or you could, you could, you could ask Jeff as chair, you could ask, ask Dave if that's something that um, a planning grant is something that they're considering, or if there's anything that, that the pathways committee could do to be helpful, maybe. Yeah. Um, I don't think going to the select board and, you know, demanding that we, you know, move the process forward is, is helpful because um, the select board changes lots and lots and, you know, nobody's intentionally being any part of a, the, the resistance. The last time that we talked about it, it was more DOT giving us this presentation about all the analysis they had done with pass through times and all of this and the select board kind of got the impression that they were just trying to move cars through there really fast and it wasn't about the pedestrians um yeah. and it wasn't about this it wasn't about doing this study that would actually look at all the costs and benefits of different things and so i think we all kind of were like paralyzed a little bit that was with the intention of being able to move something forward faster but I think we have, are recognizing now we need more information and um, it, it shouldn't be hard to encourage them well, to- That's the thing what we need, Allison. I'm, all I'm doing is asking who asks whom for what, when? I think um, Jeff as chair should check in probably with Dave Saint Laurent what, on whether I that's just, a problem. I just made that note, Allison. That's exactly what I. Perfect. Heard. Thank you. That's all I wanted to know. Who, yeah. who asked who, for what, when? That's what I'm going to do. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to move us on a little bit. Uh, Anita, can you update the group on the status of the Rawson Avenue Bridge? Uh, I think Allison knows better than I do. Um, um, Allison informed us that 
the last select board meeting where it was mentioned, um, the schedule was mentioned or proposed schedule was not correct. And um, so the updated version, Allison, correct me if I'm wrong, is that um, DOT is planning to remove the bridge in, in the spring, maybe around April, and then sometimes shortly thereafter, maybe as late as June, the pedestrian bridge would go in. That's my understanding. Um, I'm not sure. I, I think it would be great if we knew who's building the pedestrian bridge and um, whether we can find out directly from the manufacturer if that bridge can go in soon. So Hi. this has all been this is all being managed through MDOT as part of their LPA something or other program, but it's it's definitely not appropriate for for committees or for the select board or anybody to be contacting contractors. That's like one of the first things they tell everybody when we start this. Um, that's efforts are already being made to to keep the 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 space in between the demolition of the old bridge and the putting in of the new bridge as short as possible. Um, Audra updated us at our most recent select board meeting saying that 10, right now the schedule is, I believe, mid-April for removal and mid-June for for putting the new one in. You're, you're really not going to, that's good news. And that's I, great I can't news. imagine that's doing great much news. better than that. So That's awesome news, Allison. It was a good news thing. So I think everybody's doing everybody's doing their best, and it appears yeah. to be on track. Absolutely. I I I just want to. I don't know exactly how it happened. There was advocacy in this direction, and that the town responded is fantastic. Um. Yeah, it was really good. So, if you run into anybody, tell them thank you. Um, for being we actually have this whole spreadsheet that had been made Dave put up together something that it was handed out to the select board during our our goal setting workshop that nobody really actually looked at at the time um, but it it had all of this on this piece of paper and so and just like I said it actually so Audra said something at the select board meeting the, a couple times ago that might have just been somebody misspeaking and then looking at the at the sheet of paper that had been provided to us a couple months ago it's actually um it's uh, actually this newest thing so i think it was all it, it wasn't the fact that like somebody advocated or i got really upset or whatever i i just said oh wow that's a big gap and and dave said oh that's not what's on the schedule you know that's it was it was just verbal miscommunication at that's some what it was point so all right um but Good it did sound there. alarming to me when i heard it but yeah yeah. Good. Uh, I'm going to jump a little bit down here to uh, a different agenda item because I've had to push it down a couple of times. And that is that um, we had, uh, in order to move the, the Camden master plan, bike and ped master plan forward, select board had asked us to do that public info meeting, which we did. And we collected the information on it. And I have those comments. And uh, I can certainly, I, I think what I'd like to do is, I'm thinking out loud here is I'm thinking what we should do is, is I, I should share those with you all and we should consider which ones or what changes, if any changes we wanna make to um, the draft master plan that we have. But it's, the plan is sort of stuck now and I wanna get it unstuck. Uh, uh, it's stuck because of this public input. And um, does that sound like a good process to send it around to you guys? And then at the next meeting, uh, look for comments, and then we decide on what to integrate and what not to. And then the next step after that would be to take um, that edited and updated master plan back to the select board and tell them this is what we've done. And again, ask them to accept it. Sound good? Okay. Um, Before we go on, can I ask a question? Yes, Tom. We were talking about um, complete streets and how we can 
encourage the town to adopt a complete streets plan. I wonder if we could put that in the the uh, in our plan that um, just well, defining yeah. what complete streets are and making that one of our goals to get the town to adopt that as part of their. There is there is uh, there is complete streets wording in the plan. Um, I'd have to revisit it to find. I can't remember exactly how we said it, but there I is. I understand that. No, I, I'm pretty sure there is. But um, when uh, when I was in the town office uh, a while back, Audra asking asking the question, Tom, um, she encouraged us to come up with a policy that could be considered um, by the town, by the select board. And I've been working on that and I'll be done in the next couple days. Um, and I'd like to send it around. The idea is that the select board adopts it as a policy. Um, yeah. And, and well, that's, that's good. good if they're if they're that receptive. Yeah, I think I, I think we should try. As, I think we should try. Yeah, I and to be more receptive, but that's great. Yeah, that I think I think the select board would support it. I really, really do. Um, um, there are uh, the the process I'm going through is I've looked at about a dozen policies that have been adapted adopted in Maine by other towns. And I'm using them as a template to to build ours. So they all seem to be actually pretty darn similar. Good. Yeah. So that's that's my plan. And I'll get that to you and for comment uh in the next week. And then the next step would be I'll give it to Audra and then I think she'll she'll put it forward to the select board. I'm not exactly sure on that, but we'll figure out that process on how that goes. Um, yes, you think it's time to eat. Yeah, we do. Uh, the next one is, <laughs> yeah. Then the next item is, is that there's been, um, there's been just a little more buzz around uh, resurrecting this connector, pedestrian bicycle connector between Camden and the high school along the power line right, right away. And you don't have to exactly know where it goes, but it's, um, <laughs> There is a power line that runs from Camden all the way to the high school. And the power company, CMP owns, I think, I don't know if it's CMP, but somebody like that owns that right away. And they are open to the dis to discussing about putting a path underneath that. Um, my question for the group is, uh, this is an enormous project or would be an enormous task to undertake. Uh, it was mentioned uh, it was mentioned in the VPI in Rockport uh, as part of their plan. Um, it was tangential, but it was in that plan. Um, and it's being mentioned, it's being discussed sort of a little bit in Rockport as an idea. And I think it's being discussed a bit in Camden as well. I, I think it would need some energy, a lot of energy uh, to get under it. And so the question for the group is, do we want to take that on at this time or stay focused on um, our current hit list? Or can we do both? I don't know. Open for discussion. Anita, your hands up. Um. I think it's a great idea, but I I am very concerned about diluting our efforts. I, I'm so interested in seeing the Elm Street situation get resolved on both sides of the street, as Dave St. Laurent suggests. So um, if, if, if we get, uh, my opinion is that if we get far enough along with Elm Street that um, there is a design 
and there is a grant and DOT is on board and Day St. Laurent and you know that that there's some gas in the engine and it's starting to happen then great let's turn our attention elsewhere but um, before that to turn our attention to this very major project you're suggesting um, I think takes us away from Elm Street. Elm Street has to be resolved. It's the highest priority. That's my opinion. I love you. Sorry, Gary. Oh, no, I just said, um, I agree exactly uh, what, what she's saying to Elm Street. It probably is one of the highest priorities, but I know how government works. We're, we're talking probably realistically five to 10 years before. I mean, it, the a pathway, we have, it's the Pathways Committee too. It's just not sidewalk committee. It's a Pathways Committee. If we can do something to enhance the kids of the Camden Rockford School, get them as a path can be built there. I think it's, as a as a new member, at least look into it. I mean, they may sign it, but see, just do a little bit of focus, who owns it, whether we can do it, and maybe look for grants that may come under a different grant um, with that. But you know, I, the more we can do for our children and connecting something to the high school, I think that's, that's such a high priority along with other stuff. And it, we may find that it, it isn't feasible, but at least it's something to do it. I, I've, one of the other things that a big priority is getting a, a safe pathway to the snowball from Camden. And that's, I know that's super hard too, but getting a safe pathway so that people can walk or, or ride a bike without, there was just a story the other day how about someone almost got um, hit with a car along that with a bicyclist in the road and a car going around them and another car coming fast the other way. I mean, there's gonna be more there's going to be more accidents in places like that too, if we don't look at, at least look at them. And I know, I know that we only have so much time and so much energy to look at it, but at least, at least keep the door open to look at other things and, and along with working the priority. But I just know that like the, any route one stuff at that, it is a concern. The other concern that the DOT from being in the, in the government, the DOT, there's a move to take the, the DOT out and put it in the general fund. That's going to mean a lot lower money for the DOT. Uh, the DOT uh, gas tax revenues is dedicated revenue. It goes into the department for roads and stuff. The other issue that people haven't talked about, the more and more electric cars we have, we've seen a lot of gas consumption at one little store on the corner. There's going to be a lot less. How are we going to pay for these roads? And when the state government works, there's all these, there's so many things, the schools need to be funded. Uh, there's, there's a lot of uh, money issues that are gonna have. And the only way I can think of it, we're gonna have to have more toll roads in Maine that you have to pay. When you use the road, you're gonna have to pay a toll because gas tax revenues are dropping a lot. Well, and, that's, it's, I think that's a little bit beyond the scope of this group. <laughs> oh, no, no, I'm just saying, just the project, I'm just saying that the project's like, these projects we love to do, we're focusing on them. Those may or may not get funded by the the, the, the oh, government. Sure. Oh, sure. They They're not going to have the money that yeah. they've owed had in the past. But that's why I said that's why I don't the projects that are feasible just don't push them to the back burner. We we can at least do something. I think to to improve uh, some of the roadways without waiting for that big uh, uh, federal state money. Mm. But that's just fine. Just that's from being in politics, talking to, you know, yeah. being on the state level. Um, okay. It's going to be an issue, I think. But. Thank you. Uh, Allison? Yeah, I mean, I guess along similar lines in, in some ways that looking at, you know, how things actually get done and which things happen because of committee advocacy over you know a long period of time kind of against the grain sometimes or as opposed to things that that happen that are led by the dot or led by the 
the town that we do have to be careful about making sure to, to take advantage of momentum. And so the, I don't think it needs to be seen as like, it would be a decision between Elm Street and this kind of a, a pathway. Um, it's not, you know, when, when something actually becomes a DOT priority or a partnership with the town, it, it contractors get hired and they study things and they figure it out. And um, it's not something that would be like the committee needing to decide to, to, to vote a bunch of resources to. Um, with, and, you know, what I've kind of been learning with this is that they seem to get excited when it can connect into other things that are happening. And so who's they, who's because they, John, they get excited. DOT a lot of the oh, time. Yeah. In terms okay. of being like, they're, they're big, they have funding for this, you know, these big active transportation plans and they like the idea of connecting things to other, multimodal. right. Connecting things to other things. And so we've already identified, you know, John street is putting in a sidewalk on John street and extending the sewer and, and all of that. And so, that's what generated sort of the revival of this conversation about the trail to the high school that, oh, wow, you know, wouldn't that be great because we're going to be getting people all the way. We have this new sidewalk on, on Pearl Street, so you can go that way. And then you've got John Street. And then if you can connect at the public works garage where those power lines are. And and so it, from from my understanding, it was, you know, Dakota talking to Dave, it was like, almost like they were thinking of this was a new idea. Like, oh yeah, wouldn't that be great? You know, little do they know that this was the reason the pathways committee was, was formed 20 years ago or whatever. Um, and it, to me, it kind of feels like that, like, okay, this is, this is great. It failed before for different reasons. You know, I think it was the Mary spring board of directors didn't want people going through there and the goose river golf course or something. And, you know, a couple select board members that didn't know if there was a real need or not. Um, and I, a lot of the conversation had to do with like getting landowner permission. But what we've learned since then is that if you go on the power lines, CMP already has all the rights that you need. Um, and so I, I think that, that since there is enthusiasm for it, and I heard enthusiasm on the select board too, like, and I've heard it in the general public, it, it would not a lot is needed from the pathways committee, but you wouldn't want to stand in the in the way of it of saying, well, you should be focusing on this instead, because all that will do is sort of kill the enthusiasm of of people that are, you know, in the decision making role, like DOT and Dave St. Laurent, like it has to go through the public works garage area too, um, which I think we should be encouraging, I guess, is what is what I'm saying, because if there's funding for this kind of thing right now, and if there's enthusiasm, you, you kind of have to ride that wave. Um, and Elm Street, with the roads, a lot of it is going to depend on when things get really dug up for other reasons. So major improvements to Elm, to Elm Street sidewalk are probably, for funding reasons, going to need to happen in conjunction with major drainage improvements and, and when they decide that that's at a critical point so we might not be able to force i think we should try to force a planning grant and looking at that but like we might not be able to force rapid changes that are really good on elm street unless it's it's done with a larger project kind of like pearl street um how they had to dig the whole thing up anyway Do you so think, um... i don't think you should devote all committee resources to to the trail but just being encouraging would be important and the snowball maybe, too. I mean, that's a maybe big, circling that's a big may, deal. Maybe circling around to this initial idea about the, I, I now I see it. It's village improvement plan, a VIP, uh, mm -hmm. and it's also the tra uh, traffic infrastructure study. That's what Rockport did, but the uh, get target the village improvement plan, and that would also include potentially um, discussions related to this corridor under the power lines and potentially uh, accessing uh, pedestrian access out to the snowball. So it could come all under there. That's in fact, what happened in Rockport is that um, they initially were just gonna study route 90 
um, but they extended it all through the downtown uh, and had lots of recommendations on pedestrian infrastructure um, in their proposal, uh, the BIP proposal that they that the contractor gave them. So it, it might work that way, Allison. Um, uh, go through that planning process and 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 talk a little bit more about that. That could be a that, and that, I think that's where we would want to take the guidance of 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 Dave and Dakota. If right. for some reason they think that the this this trail and pathway idea can be, you know, on a faster track for some reason, I you know, I would want to support that. But if it makes sense to tie it all together, yeah. then then yes. I just think I see momentum from the people that that have the ability to make things happen and so you yeah. know we would try to want to support that okay anybody else tom yeah speaking of uh tying into things that are gaining momentum um i think the road widening the road or somehow making the road safer going out to the snowball ties in with things that are going on because the land trust is putting in the parking lot that connects to the to the mountain biking trails. That's at Rollins Road, yeah. At Rollins Road. Um, the town is trying to figure out what to do with the ski area to make it more profitable in the in the non winter season. Mm -hmm. And also at the state park, you know, they hired a young guy to repair the trails and so forth and he's gotten uh, mountain more mountain bike trails open over there and is promoting that. So Camden really is beginning to move in the direction of getting a lot more interest in cycling. So mm -hmm. improving the road from downtown out to the snowball is, would fit right in with all of that. So I'm, I'm, I'm in favor of all of these things, you know, and I do understand that we only have so much bandwidth, but, um, mm sounds like mm. those are two things that might be uh, the time might be right to mm. pay some attention to good input thanks tom richard anything um well to be honest not at this point you're covering a lot of things that have crossed my mind but you know, yeah um we certainly the the power line project we should revisit in the joint committee meeting in is that September or October um, but uh, hey uh oh that was interesting oh go ahead Richard we lost you for a minute yeah I don't know I don't know what I did but I obviously touched something yeah um, but uh, yeah, the the power line um, pathway we certainly should talk about with with Rockport. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, um, and I uh, in in that regard, I would encourage all of you again to check out the plan that their consultants came up with under the VIP grant. Um, it just blew my socks off that it was so well thought out um, in terms of considering other thing, other modes of transportation other than cars. Um, it was really, really, really good. I just thought they knocked it out of the park. And if we came up with something like that for Camden, it would be great. So Did I'm you gonna... send us a link to that or I have to, is that something that um, I got on a website to, or I'm, it? Um, I can't remember. Could you just maybe send a link to the? I will the send group? a link. Just I was to... trying to remember where I found the link. Um, I think it, it. No, no. I was going to say it's on their uh, their uh, YouTube channel, but it's not. It's somewhere else. So I'll I will find that, and I will do that. Um, that's. Okay about all I have for this meeting, Anita? Um, so I want to ask Allison, 
um, the the TIF plan that was uh, the two TIF plans that were established in 2010 are being reviewed and were discussed at the recent select board meeting. Uh, Audra said that there's she's going to be going over those TIF plans and seeing whether the select board wants to make any suggestions or changes, particularly regarding the projects identified in the TIF plans that have not been undertaken and may not be undertaken and whether there's something else that we want to go in in place. I don't know whether these two projects that we're talking about, the right-of-way pathway and the uh, trail to the snowball could be considered under either of those TIF plans as um, projects that could be partially funded. They weren't identified um, at the time. I don't think under the B, yeah, under TIF. Yeah. The TIF district I, doesn't cover those areas, but I could be wrong. It doesn't even really connect to them. I'm just asking. I Alice. think that actually right now the, the moment there the, isn't a major funding issue identified. I I would be careful about suggesting too many other uses for the TIF considering, did you see what one of the major TIF fundable projects is, is the river walk, um, you know, is in there. And so I would think that it might be smart for this committee to look over that ag again and think about the funding needs for the river walk. Um, I, I had a, a like a little public input meeting with um, Coastal Mountains Land Trust yesterday. They're just inviting members to talk about various things. And, and so we we're talking about the river walk a little bit and um, models for easements for people, you know, property owners when they're, you know, willing to allow some kind of future um, easement to go on their property or future path, um, you know, different ways that the we've talked about this, I know a lot, like if the, if the town were to want to purchase an easement from somebody that could then be held by Coastal Mountains Land Trust and just, you know, how we can do things like that. But that, things like that might be an appropriate use for TIF funds, you know, to make sure before everybody, now that everybody's been reminded of the TIF funds, before it all gets gobbled up, um, you know, with other things it was it was really good to watch that the other day because um it really reinforced how important the river walk was to to everyone um and and there there's you know funding available for it so it would be a good chance to say hey let's get this on the ballot to have a i know anita in the past you've mentioned maybe wanting to have a reserve fund that could be designated for purchasing key you know, spots or key easements. Um, and this might be something that you could push that forward with. Um, so not really the question you asked, but. Well, I, I wish I didn't know about that, Allison. I probably would have missed it anyway. I did have a meeting with Coastal Mountains Land Trust about a month ago to discuss this very issue about what their role could be related to easements and um, holding the easements on properties uh and i did hear back from them uh i didn't have a chance to meet with ian but i did meet with one of his staff people staff persons and basically the yeah outcome... i talked to ian about that a little bit Rick, okay. he mentioned that that he talked to you all right cool yeah but they, you know what they said is that they're willing to do all, all this but they don't have the staffing to you know, pursue all of the negotiating and, and, and talking, we would need to present them with, a, a, with a opportunities done deal. of, yeah. right, you know, where somebody wants to do it and there's a, a you know, a, a benefit and, um, but yeah, it sounds like we just need to connect the dots a little bit and identify is there a, you know, sometimes there are people that just want to donate that, but you know, sometimes for people, I think it would be uh, being able to purchase something from them for a, a re from for a reasonable fee would be worth it to the town 
you know, and worth it to the, to the property owner. Um, yeah. You know, rather than just hoping that everybody's going to let a trail go through their property for free. Um, okay. Yeah. That's a whole nother topic. I'm going to make a note of that so that we can resurrect it and um, chat a little bit more about that. Uh, but TIF funds, you know, are totally allowed no. to be used for, for that. Yeah. yeah. All right. Um, anything else, anybody? Last chance. Okay. Gary, I, I just realized I'm going to, um, I want to have a coffee with you somehow. I just can't get, I can't travel right now. <laughs> Okay. okay, but I I'll get in touch with you and we'll arrange something. I want to chat with you about this this topic. Um, like I said, um, I love Camden so much, and we can make it even better yeah. by doing things and 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 the traffic issues, the sidewalk issues, and and even the the pathways and stuff. That I'm just the uh, of all the committees in Camden. This to me, this is the the most exciting because we can make recommendations and make changes. Yeah. Making Camden better. It you is know, exciting. It is fun. All right, everybody. Um, thanks so much. And um, Gary, I'll be in touch. Thanks, um, Gary. Yeah. I, yeah. Thank you. Nice talking to all of you. <laughs> thanks, Tom. Yeah, it was great to have uh, you, okay. Gary. Thanks, everybody. Yeah. Good night. Good night. Thanks, bye. Thanks, everyone. See you all later. Yeah. Bye bye. <laughs>